Well, it's a very exciting opportunity mm -hmm. for the group. In fact, uh, it uh, uh, represents a, a, a large-scale acquisition for us. There are over 4,000 uh, pupils uh, within the McKinney Schools group. Uh, and it's an exciting venture for us mm. because we have clearly stated that we intend to expand into the rest of the continent. We're opening Crawford International School in Nairobi as well, which is a greenfield site development, and we've had a very positive response to that. But the McKinney School really gives us critical mass in that market with, as I say, over 4,000 pupils. So um, we've still got work to do. Um, we believe that we'll be able to add value to that school in terms of its processes, its systems, and the academic content. But we're very excited about reaching some critical mass and scale in these markets. Yeah. Roy, I, I just want to understand uh, the choice for uh, some of the acquisitions and countries that you actually do enter. Because if we're to look at uh, what uh, disposable income, savings, or GDP per capita, uh, Kenya is not really in the top three when it comes to the African continent. So why opt for Kenya as opposed to a Nigeria or a, let's say an Ethiopia? Well, there are a variety of reasons, and really our evaluation of each opportunity takes into account a number of different criteria. The first thing we have to be satisfied with is that the school or the educational institution that we're looking at aligns with our particular visions and values, and that is a quality commitment to education. And the Kini Schools is well established, has an excellent reputation in Nairobi, started by a family who are well respected in the market there, and it fitted and aligned with what we believed was a quality educational offering. So it's not just the economy, uh, and the markets that you mentioned sometimes have some of their own problems too. We're satisfied that uh, on whole parents in Africa are similar to parents across the globe. They're looking for quality education for their children as an opportunity for an advance in the future. So um, it met the criteria, uh, the price was correct, we think that its actual value set were aligned with ours, and we're very pleased with the transaction. And um, obviously we still have work to do in terms of realizing that full value of the investment but we're excited by the start. Yeah, and I mean, just to add on to Arnold's question there, apart from um, the region, the East African region, are there plans or are there other uh, regions that meet that criteria that you've spoken about that you may look to um, get into? Yeah, indeed. We find right across the continent, um, uh, youthful populations, uh, urbanization, emerging middle class, uh, and a desire and a thirst for quality education offerings prevents opportunity for us right across the continent. There are nuances according to the different geographies, but those fundamental demographics are consistent and common right across a number of geographies. Yeah. Right. Something that really sticks out here for me is uh, the staffing division, which did grow uh, revenue by 4%. What exactly does that mean? Well, the, the resourcing business is in the placement area, and you can imagine under the economic conditions that we're experiencing at the moment and over the past few years, it's an extremely tough place. Our resourcing business get up every single day and uh, have to face a blank sheet and see what they can do. So we're very proud of what they've done in a, in a very tough market where there have in fact been uh, job losses, uh, unemployment has grown, um, and for our business to be able to deliver some element of growth shows that we're a uh, winning market in, a, in what is probably a declining market uh, situation. Mm. One of the issues which I'd like for you to address, which is not isolated to the Advertech group of schools, is the, um, the leaving of children based on financial issues um, or immigration. Focusing, I mean, we can't control the immigration element, but focusing on the financial constraints that parents may face in the current climate, has there been a strategy that Advertech has taken up to perhaps um, offer some financial assistance or s something along those lines? Um, we have always uh, consulted with parents when they have difficulty in meeting their financial obligations. That's nothing new. What is new, of course, is the extent and the depth, perhaps, of the hardship that's been felt by the consumers as we've had five years of cumulative uh, poor economic performance. So we do engage, we do consult, and quite honestly, any exclusion on the result of uh, financial inability is something that we, is a real last resort for us. However, of course, um, it is something that we, uh, we have to do. Um, it's unfair for parents uh, to continue to perhaps get themselves deeper and deeper into debt. And we find that our existing payment arrangements are the best. And if it comes to the fact that there's exclusion, it's usually because it's the very end of the road in the sense of affordability. So it's something we don't enjoy, but it's a fact of life. R Roy, uh, very briefly before I let you go, um, if five of the top ten universities, public universities on the continent, are in South Africa, th that already is a statement. Uh, and going forward, you seeing uh, maybe the UK is doing the same, attracting so many immigrants, should I say, uh, for purposes of an education, of course, higher education. Isn't immigration getting in the way? And if so, uh, isn't it the, the onus of uh, the likes of Roy uh, here and every other player in the system 
to make sure that immigration takes a back seat and uh, let as many uh, 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 players or university students as it can be actually uh, come into the system? Uh, yes, we encourage uh, immigration from a point of view of student profile. We think that a diverse uh, um, student population adds to the quality of the education. And in fact, I think between 10 to 15 percent of our tertiary students are in fact from other geographies, mostly in the rest of Africa. So we are doing that. Of course, there's a balance and a blend and a commitment to our own population for tertiary qualifications. What and percentage are we looking at here? Uh, sorry, of foreign students? Yes. 10 to 15 percent of our student base are from foreign countries.